Do you think soldiers and militants enjoy the battlefield violence and mayhem? Do you think the police enjoys chasing the bad guys? Keep these questions in mind, and I'm going to tell you all about violence. Why do some people enjoy violence? This is the University of the Netherlands. Do people enjoy killing? Is there any pleasure in violence? I'm not talking about criminals and serial killers, but I am talking about ordinary civilians who volunteer and join militias and guerrilla groups. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the pleasures of violence to explain why some men choose to join militias and extremist group. I will tell you about some of my experiences during my field work when I traveled with militias. Based on those stories, I will explain why people fight, kill, and what pleasure has to do with that. In a way, I tell you the story of radicalization, but I don't focus on religion as the motivating factor. Instead, I point at the combat experience. I will discuss why combat is a motivation in itself. This is regardless of religious promises, such as hell and heaven or some virgins in the paradise. Let me give you a bit of historical background. My research focuses on militant groups who fought against the so-called Islamic State of Syria and Iraq, ISIS, or in Arabic as Daesh. ISIS claimed in its propaganda through social media that everyone else who does not follow Sunni Islam are enemies of Allah and ISIS. ISIS follows Sunni traditions, which strictly believe in the Quran, the holy book, and the teachings of Muhammad Prophet. This meant other smaller Islamic groups like Shia Muslims, Alawite of Syria, Yazidi Kurds, were seen as enemies by ISIS. By 2014, ISIS was strongly developing towards southern Iraq, where mostly Iraqi Shia communities live and their holy shrines are located there. Shia religious leaderships ask Shia men to volunteer and fight against ISIS to stop it from reaching the southern regions of Iraq. Therefore, these militias and volunteers became an important part of the war against ISIS. Despite that, they were not very well trained. I researched these volunteer militants' combat behavior because they were not obliged to follow human rights law and international conventions. These laws and conventions prohibit killing of civilians, torture of prisoners, and excessive use of violence during the war. I discuss a particular combat behavior which is taking pleasure in inflicting violence to show the combat behavior of these volunteer militants are not linked to their religious beliefs and faith. They are not simply a group of overzealous and indoctrinated individuals. Let me make it easy. Religion could be one factor among many other reasons for people to fight in a militant group, but it is not the factor. So if it's not religion, then what? What is the reason to enjoy violence? I use anthropological methods like ethnographic fieldworks and participant observations to answer these questions, which means I live with the people, observe them, and participate in their everyday lives to understand their mindset. I learned by observing and talking to volunteer militants in Iraq the non-religious factors that explain why these men stay committed to their cause and militias. Please pay attention. I did not say what motivates them to join, but factors that keep them committed to these groups. Motivations and commitments are different. Motivation is about the first spark and attraction to some men joining militias, but commitment is about remaining loyal and returning to the war again and again. Combat is not easy. Battlefield is crazy dangerous. Practicing and getting in shape for combat is difficult. And finally, following commands of a voice on the radio who is telling you, go ahead and put yourself in more danger, is not a walk in a park. So why do militants remain committed to militancy 
and continue ahead. Back in 2016, I was traveling with militants who were fighting ISIS in Iraq. They were distributing the daily food among fighting forces who had to stop for the day. We reached a ruin building where a militia unit associated with the Iraqi federal police was resting. We noticed two armed men laughing and enjoying their time by using a nice prisoner for target practice. The prisoner was beaten to the inch of his life. They shot him again and again with an air gun for target practice. And they laughed at the pain and cries and the prisoner who begged them to stop. Please keep in mind, they have caught an evil ISIS prisoner who beheaded their friends. So they think they are doing the right thing and the ISIS prisoner deserve torture. But the idea of the right thing gradually vanishes when someone practices violence. And the only thing remains is the exhilarating moment of having the power over somebody else and taking pleasure in violence. I followed such cruelties during the war and talked to militants to figure out why violence becomes enjoyable. However, I learned the pleasures of violence are not only, only there during combat and in the battlefield. They are present after combats. For instance, some militants exchange pictures of corpses or selfie with fresh killed corpses or photos that show them decapitating enemies' corpses and holding with glory. So, or after combat operations and liberating areas, displaying of pleasures of violence and cruelty was about creating fear among locals who collaborated with ISIS. Militants would drag the dead bodies of ter ISIS terrorists in cities and villages to scare anyone who may want to join ISIS or have given refuge to ISIS fighters in their houses. To put it simply, practicing violence, displaying pleasure for such practices, and creating fear become pleasant experience for some militants. So, I ask, where do pleasures of violence come from? I realized during my research, many young men in the age range of 30 to 40 passionately remain committed to violence because the pleasures of violence is rooted in the larger desire to break away from structural impositions imposed on their lives. They come from a patriarchal society which controls most aspects of their lives. The patriarchal society in Iraq centralizes decision-making in older men and elite members of communities. These young men cannot plan for their future by themselves. They cannot marry whoever they like. Even their choice of clothing and fashion, hairstyle are frowned upon by elders. They cannot easily engage in a business without prior arrangements in their social network. They cannot migrate without prior confirmation from family and authorities. The patriarchal authority limits what anthropologists call their individual agency. Additionally, patriarchal society operates through power dynamics and it is aggressive rather than paternal, kind and caring. Therefore, militias provide a network where militants find paternal care. They find kindness through their unit mates. Militias, combat, war, provide an opportunity to become a man and break the most important taboo in society with no consequences. One can legitimately break the sanctity of life and even be celebrated for it. The pleasure that comes with combat and violence is rooted in the possibility to break rules of life without any consequences. You could ask, what about religious limitations, conscience, general humane morality? why they don't prevent them from violence and enjoying it. But religious limitation and God are rarely there in the heat of battle. In combat, there is fear, there is anger, there is chaos, just trying to stay alive. And combatants try to use pleasure as a coping mechanism. Conscience 
and general humane morality are always there, but they are shaped differently in societies which are constantly bombarded and where there is foreign invasion. They lack proper governance due to the invasion because long wars produce a certain kind of other who is not accepted member of a society or a nation. The other can be transgressed, disposed of, and con not considered fully human. To put it differently, the ISIS prisoner is seen as lesser than a human because Iraqi society has experienced violence again and again. Therefore, killing and torturing and violating a lesser than human become pleasant to some militants. My research explains how pleasures of violence and killing are rooted in a broken fabric of compassion in a society, or excessive patriarchal domination. Simply violence breeds violence, and the other is perceived as a lesser than human because violence of a society. For instance, understanding the pleasure that those Iraqi militants took in torturing the ISIS prisoner cannot be limited to religious factors alone, or by simply saying these two men were sadists and they are just two among many great men. Following the pleasures of violence show how these two men and others like them are produced due to socio-cultural conditions and no one is violent by design. No one commits violence because some god or some voices in the sky told them to go do it. They are mechanism at work in combat that shapes violence. And pleasure is one of them. For example, Iraq has experienced US invasion since 2003. And this foreign invasion shattered the foundation of Iraqi society that suffered for a long time under Saddam Hussein, the Iraqi dictator. Origins of violence today in 2021 becomes clear in relation to violence of foreign invasion in 2003. The repeated histories of violence produce individuals which could seek opportunities in combat to repute the inhumanity done to them and take pleasures by feeling powerful. To understand the complexities of violence today in Iraq, we need an anthropologist to talk to the people, document their experiences and feelings, to understand how they express themselves through pleasures of violence. Anthropology can help to explain how individual members of societies become violent because of past events in history. Long story short, why do some people find pleasure in violence? Finding pleasure in violence for militants is not about the joy that one could experience from skydiving or a good meal or even it is not compatible with sadism. The pleasures of violence, at least in the militant groups, can be traced to two factors. First, a longing to break away from the patriarchal society and become an autonomous individual. Second, past violent events in a society can create othering and reduce the enemy to something less than human. Diminishing moral objections to violent practices and even taking pleasures in them. A staying committed to a militant group that then cannot be explained by religious factors alone. But also we should consider the pleasure factor that is rooted in a society and its history. Thanks for keeping up with my madness.